Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video I'm going to show you how you can start using glue alphabets. Now Eclipse offers several options when it comes to glue alphabets. So today we're going to start with the most basic type of glue alphabet. A glue alphabet will allow you to easily fingerspell words and make sure that those spellings are kept together. So for this example I've written just a short file using glue characters for my name. And so for each character of my name, it's actually an individual stroke. And this allows me to spell something that might not be in my dictionary and to make it come out however I'd like it to. And so for each of these characters, including the space, I have a special stroke and this allows me to spell anything that I would like. So here in the note file, you see that each stroke along with its definition is listed. And so after the answer symbol, each letter is defined with open curly bracket, ampersand, capital A, close curly bracket. And I've done this for each letter in the alphabet within my main dictionary. And this allows me to spell anything I'd like at any time. Now in this case, I've defined this glue alphabet to use capital letters. If I wanted to, I could instead define this to use lowercase letters so that I can spell words that might not be in my dictionary. And you can, of course, have multiple glue alphabets for multiple purposes. Many people will use a letter plus FPLT for one style of glue alphabets and then use the letter plus comma for a second style. You also have the option of using delineators between the letters. I'm going to change this back to a capital A and I'll show you what I mean. So if I look in F1 help and pull up dictionary and then syntax, in the middle of this article, there's a whole section for glue templates. And so the first one that I showed you with ampersand and then the capital letter is the most basic. And this will give you the letter that you place in the definition in the case that you use in the document and it will attach it to whatever was before it. And so if you have an entire alphabet of these entries, you can spell any word that you need to and you can do it in any case that you need to. However, within the basic blue alphabets, we can also use separators. And so let me show you what using a separator will look like. First, I'm going to change all of my entries to use the dash separator. And notice that the dash separator goes in front of the letter while the A separator goes behind the letter. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to open my dictionary. I'm going to hit F5. And if I look through the text shortcut list, I can find alphabets with glue symbols and I'll press OK. And so this shows me all of the letters that I have in my dictionary currently for glue alphabets. Right now, I only have the letters for my name. I'm going to hit F5 and I'm going to replace the left bracket ampersand with left bracket ampersand hyphen on all of my entries. And so now I have all of the same letters, except now when I translate this file, I'll get a hyphenated version of my name instead. So I'm going to close the ECL file. I'll return to the note file and let's give it a quick tran. And in this case, all of the words in my name were hyphenated. However, keep in mind that I used a for space between each word to achieve a space. If you didn't use a space between the words that you're spelling this way, they would all run together. And so this is one of the most common glue alphabets that users use in order to finger spell names when people spell them in court. And again, the entries look like this, and let me make this bigger. And so to use the hyphenated version, instead of open bracket, ampersand, the letter, you do open bracket, ampersand, a hyphen, and then the letter. However, if we refer back to the help article, there's also a period delineated option, and the period goes after the letter. And so I'm going to change my entries back to what I had originally. 
And now I can add the period at the end. So now every letter that I'm going to be using is defined as open curly bracket, ampersand, the letter, and then a period, close curly bracket. And so now we're going to close the ECL once again, and we'll translate this file. And now my name has periods between each letter instead of hyphens. And so some people will have a special alphabet set up for each variation of these. They may have 26 strokes to represent each letter in a capitalized glue alphabet, a lowercase glue alphabet, a hyphenated glue alphabet, and a period delineated glue alphabet. And that is 26 strokes times four. And so that can add up to a lot of strokes if you need to use all of those different versions. If you only ever need to spell things in one way, then that's fine. Just put it in your dictionary that way. However, on the next video, I'm going to show you another option that you have with glue alphabets, which is glue templates. And this allows you to use fewer strokes to achieve the same results. And so instead of having potentially four sets of 26 strokes, you could have a glue command stroke followed by 26 characters and those characters will take on whatever glue command you issue it. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video, so stay tuned. Glue alphabets really do have a lot of expandability, and if you understand how the glue templates work, you can really cut down on the necessary strokes that you need to have in your dictionary in order to achieve all of the different possible glue outcomes. And for some people, that's very important. Don't forget that Advantage Software offers anytime support. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.